I'm Giovanna Fletcher and welcome back to Journey to the Magic, the podcast all about Disney holidays. Now, I'm very, very excited uh, because today on the show we've got journalist and broadcaster, it's Kate Garraway, MBE. I know, but I haven't got it yet, by the way. Oh. I know. How long do you have to wait till you get that it? They th- it's a mistake. <laughs> they see it written in the paper. And they've go, gone, oh, this is awkward. <laughs> it's got out. <laughs> Let's just pretend we didn't ask her and just keep going. So, yeah, I was supposed to have had it last year. I think there's a backlog. That's what I've been told. Okay. It's a little bit like not getting picked for the hockey team, isn't oh, it? No, but you know that you have been picked. I have been picked. I have been picked. I you just, just haven't keep been given believing. Your kit yet. Keep believing. Yeah, I'll get my day at the palace. Hopefully. <laughs> Maybe they're just, you know, they've got a, the grass has got to be made greener. They've got some pruning to do with the they've roses. They've got some pruning to do, exactly. They just want it to be perfect for you, Kate. Is that what it is? It, uh, I yeah. love that. In fact, okay. someone did message okay. earlier and they just said, you know, the roses aren't up to Kate's standards, so... We're we'll not wait. doing it. Yeah. Okay. No, it's <laughs> lovely. It was lo- it's lovely to think that it might happen. <laughs> <laughs> Don't quite believe it. It's amazing. <laughs> it's absolutely incredible. And, you know, it's for all of your years of work that you've done and also the incredible work you've done over the last couple of years with your documentaries, with Derek and everything as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, So I think it is. I think it's a bit of charity, a bit of broadcasting and a bit of, um, yeah. Or maybe they got me confused with somebody else. You don't know. (laughs) (laughs) There's that Kate, you know, that presenter. uh, Oh, uh... (laughs) uh, yeah. (laughs) It's one of the Kates. It's one of the Kates. Yeah, I think they picked the right one. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and the last couple of years, has it has seen you doing a few different things as well. Yeah. Because of the documentary, which is such a more personal thing. And that's something mm. that you've felt really passionate about sharing, you know. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, crikey, it's, it's, it's one of those things that you don't want to have a reason to make. Yeah. But Derek found himself very, very ill at the very beginning of COVID. And then... I suppose because he was quite well known and and I'm on telly, uh, then people sort of start to identify with you and people that are going through it and perhaps don't have the chance to speak up about all the various things Mm. and the challenges that are still going on. Um, So, yeah, it was a chance to do it. And when we started filming, I would actually started filming myself because um, nobody could visit him in hospital, obviously, just like for everybody else. And after a while, they set up an iPad for him and we could FaceTime to try and get him out of the coma. And it was so emotional seeing him with all the tubes and everything that goes with it in such a sick state that I couldn't really take it in. And then afterwards, the doctors would say, did you see any difference from last time? And I was thinking, gosh, I don't really know that I took it in. I was just overwhelmed overwhelmed with the emotion. So I started filming it, not the sound, because I haven't worked out how to do that on the phone yet. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not very technically confident. But just, and then I would watch it back and I would remember what I'd said and try and see if there was a reaction. And then I had all this material and they said, oh, we'd like to do something. And I said, well, I don't know what the end of the story is yet, but you're right. Let's let's try and do something. So, yeah. And how are the family? How is everyone? They're OK. They're good. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, it is challenging. He's still very, very damaged. Still can't really move. Still can't really speak. Still fed, you know through tubes and so there's a long road ahead yeah but if you compare we've just had another Christmas haven't we and if you compare back to last Christmas or the Christmas before when he was still in hospital then you can see improvement it's just you just want it to be quicker and faster uh, of course like uh, everybody would and um but yeah it's um it's a challenging one but he spent most of last year in hospital as well for various different things so it was lovely to have him home Let's talk holidays because they're a Let's nice bit of escapism. Um, what was your last holiday pre-pandemic? Disneyland Paris. Was it? Yes. <laughs> I don't know what, what I Genuinely <laughs> Disneyland Paris. We stayed in Paris and went to Disneyland Paris for the day. And then on the day, it was a weekend. Mm. And we went back, we went up the Eiffel Tower and showed the kids a bit of Paris because all they really wanted to do was to go to <laughs> Disneyland Paris. We were like, we have to go wander around, you know, a couple of art galleries or something else as well. But yeah, we went to Disneyland Paris. And I remember as we headed back to get on the, the train to come back under the tunnel, um, we were, went into a pharmacy to get some paracetamol or something, and everywhere in French it said no masks or sold out. And I remember Derek and I say to each other, "God, they're taking it really seriously over yeah. here." 
And then we came back and it was literally about two or three weeks later, Derek got sick. And so it was the last, it was the last yeah. thing we did together. Yeah, yeah. And what kind of family holidays would you love to go on? Well, I think when the kids are very small, you're, you cater your family holiday in a very different way, don't you, than when you're a couple. Yeah. And so it's really about what they want to do. So I guess that's why Disneyland is amazing, because, of course, it's magical whatever age, but it's lovely when they're little. And then I think it has to have a bit of sea involved. Generally, we all like splashing the sea, attempting to surf, a little bit of snorkeling, a little bit of diving. I so, like this because it's a beach holiday, but with a bit of activity thrown in. With a bit in. of activity, yes, isn't it? You don't it? feel lazy. No, because you know, you're, not gonna you're just... doing a little bit of something. <laughs> yeah. And I think there is something about immersing yourself in the ocean that yeah. you always feel, I'm on holiday now. You know, yeah. I'm on holiday now. It's something that's fantastic. And every year as a family, the Garraway family, not the Drapers, but the Garraway family have gone ever since I was tiny to a place near Padstow in Cornwall that's on the coast. And we, it used to be that my grandparents rented a cottage for, um, you know, their kids and then the grandkids came along and then the cousins and the uncles and the aunts. And it's now about four rented cottages and there's about 28 of us the same week every year we descend upon on this tiny <laughs> Cornish village, poor souls. And I think there's something about, if you've grown up with those British seaside holidays where mm. you go rock pooling and it's freezing going in the water, but you do it anyway, yeah. that kind of cements it into your head, doesn't it? It's lovely moments. We take two weeks every year in Cornwall. It's and gorgeous, it's so isn't nice. it? Yeah. yeah. We've got wetsuits. Yeah, well, the first well, year with that the was shivering. a breakthrough. <laughs> yeah. After breakthrough, I remember my grandfather buying me a wetsuit when I was about 14 years old. I was like, why is anybody ever go in the sea <laughs> in a normal costume <laughs> that was it I now wear a wetsuit in the bath if I can <laughs> it's just the best way to experience British water is it that was an easy, although I remember so we're doing the castle we, you know uh, the celebrity cyclone oh yeah 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 for some reason we were given wetsuits because it was December yeah. in Wales but we were told to put thermals on underneath wow does that even work? as I did it I thought this is ridiculous should not be doing this no because all that happened was the water got in yes soaked through the thermals yeah. and made me freezing cold with no <laughs> like no way of warming up. That's so don't bonkers. put thermals don't on thermals your, yeah. I thought you'd just given me a new tip. There. No. If anything, I've just given you a warning. Don't okay. do it. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you managed to get away since your Disneyland Paris trip? So we haven't really, but we have just got back to Disneyland Paris. Huh. So it was our big goal to go back there with Derek. Unfortunately, on the morning, he couldn't come. Um, but we went back there with the kids and I was lucky enough to go with um, my best friend, Vicky. And it was just an amazing thing. So we, we I, I do think there's a special place. I, I think I went almost the year it opened to Disneyland Paris. Did you? I know. Look at you. <laughs> Are you horrified? <laughs> no, it's only 30 it's years. It's not the 1950s, Geo. Look at this, Geo. <laughs> that's magical. <laughs> No, you love Did it. you? <laughs> She's. <laughs> you just saw me in black and white then, didn't you? <laughs> no, that's amazing. No, but you we probably did. loved we Disneyland did. Paris and we it did. means so much well, to you then. I didn't go to Disneyland when I was a kid. Right. But my parents didn't. We didn't go abroad on holidays, actually. And um, certainly we'd never gone to Florida or, yeah. you know, California or anything like that. So uh, it was the first opportunity. And I had some cousins that were much younger than me. They were sort of six or eight. I was in my 20s, <laughs> 30 years ago. Thank you very much. <laughs> and my brother and I took them to Paris. And I've still got the bauble from the one of the original baubles. That's amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. <laughs> Tom does <laughs> I was going to say that you were old. I, <laughs> I just, I just, this is the third Disneyland Paris trip that you've mentioned. I know. And so I, I know. I, I love genuinely it. genuinely love it. I genuinely love it. Yeah. So uh, that was the first time and it was amazing. We went in January. It was snowing. There was not a single queue for the ride because nobody was ridiculous enough to go in January during the week. But it was magical. It was lovely. And I think actually that was just wonderful. You know, Is there wonderful something about returning there for Yeah, you I think so. I think so. I think the parks have something very special about them that is is slightly different as well. Mm. What do you look for in a perfect holiday now? 
Oh. I, I feel like for you, it's just Disneyland Paris. <laughs> well, Disneyland Paris is great. Yeah. I think... But do you need something to switch off? Because your life is so busy, do you need I a holiday where you can... I think so. Can... I think it's... A, a holiday, I think, is is when you don't feel too structured, isn't yeah. it? Or when you feel that there's you're slightly in control of your time and you can just sort of chill out and relax. I think that feels like a holiday. Mm. Um, so it, I love it if someone else organises it. There's <laughs> nothing nicer. And all you have to do is turn up with your passport. <laughs> Um, or not your passport even, actually just turn up with a rucksack. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I think th that's good. But, yeah, being by the sea, I tell you the most extraordinary trip I did was actually work-related. It was in back in the days of GMTV, not quite black and white. Oh, I remember um, this, Back Kate. in the days of GMTV <laughs> when I did Where on Earth is Kate Garrow? Well, I was in a different continent each morning. Wow. So you, I, I came back with ankles like this because we oh, never so... actually laid in a bed. We were like trying to sleep on flights. So it was didn't do well for my shoes but um <laughs> but you would wake up and and it was a strange thing because you know how we always say that the world is very similar and very small actually when you wake up one day in perth and then the next day in venice and then the next day somewhere else you realize actually the world is very different too people mm. are the same but it's just an extraordinary thing to see the extremes of the world condensed. I remember thinking, that's amazing. You sort of really see how the geography shapes personality, if that makes yeah. sense. You know, wake up somewhere, it's really hard and tough and difficult to well, make a living. Well, that even has an impact on how people talk. Like yeah. the weather and stuff, it has an impact on people's jaw, which it, is, it, you know, it, Yeah, that's what people say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, that was an extraordinary experience. I did look up flights today. I've only just come back from holiday. But I, look up <laughs> I don't know where to, but I'm going. Um, do you have uh, anything like a list of things that you always travel with and, and why? Yes, I gems? never go anywhere without a cagoule. Not even to the shops. I don't know. It comes from camping in Wales and camping mm. in Cornwall at a young age that it's drilled into you. A little bit like when people say they forget their sunglasses, it always shines. If you have a cagoule on you, it might not rain. So, yeah, I love, I love a cagoule. There was no, nothing definite no. in that. If you, have, if you don't have your sunnies, it will be sunny. It will but be sunny. Don't have your oh, no, it's a it meteorological fact. It's a meteorological fact. Did you not realise this? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. but, but, and also, I find, you know, if you keep the wind out, you're never cold. It's good. So have you it's got good. one that like packs up really, really small? I've got one that packs. I've got. I've got an array. Okay. If I'm honest, is it like one of those bags? Of that, have you got one that's like one of those like folded Zip up? In. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Flowery. Aww. Really embarrassing for the teenage kids. Yeah, they they don't approve particularly, but uh, they do see the worth of it, and they always say, "Mum, can I borrow one of your cagoules?" You mm. see, so yeah, I don't go anywhere where they're out of cagoule, even if it's a really hot country that never rains. I just think, ah, pop it in. Uh, Yorkshire gold tea bags. Do you travel with them? I travel with Yorkshire gold tea bags, but. They don't taste the same abroad. It's different water. Mm. But I still take it anyway because it's and a little... And the milk's always a bit different as well, isn't it? always Everything's a bit different. different. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I always have a, a, a cagoule. That would be my basic. And underwear and toothbrush as well. It's good, but, to, you know. it's good to know because otherwise <laughs> everyone will just, just think you just pack your cagoule and yeah. your Yorkshire tea bags and you're off. Good to go. You know, it's yeah. good to know. We don't want to start rumours. <laughs> <laughs> um, who do you love travelling with and why? I actually now love traveling with the kids. I love traveling with Derek. I love traveling with friends, especially friends if you've known a long time. I did a great trip recently with Alison Hammond. Oh, I bet she's fun. She's amazing. She is hilarious to travel with. She got a marriage proposal in the airport. What? We were only there for 15 minutes. Who from? I literally went to the loo, <laughs> bought a cup of tea and came back and this guy had proposed. <laughs> It was unbelievable. I was just like, what the heck? <laughs> Did he just have a spare plane ticket? It was like, oh, I no, need to he just someone. sat down and he proposed to her. It was extraordinary. Anyway, she was just like, yeah, he proposed. Really casual about it. So I was like, this is big, this is big stuff. <laughs> um, but I mean, I don't think she's seen him again. Oh, so okay, it was a no. Okay. But, um, but yeah, so she's hilarious to travel with. So actually, I've got a question about the jungle based. Oh, yeah. Have yeah, you yeah. learned any travel tricks? or hacks from your time in the jungle? Mm, that's a good question. And is there anyone from your, your campmates that you'd travel with again? 
Oh yeah, yeah, definitely, Are definitely. I love them. Group? Yeah, yeah. They were. Good. Yeah, we still got. And the also, WhatsApp so group. you guys had it where you went into COVID, didn't you? After your year. Yes. Yeah. So 2019 was up my yeah. year, and then it was the following year. But Caitlyn Jenner, I mean, we all wanted to travel there, but she literally, as the train took off, removed herself from the WhatsApp group. No, she didn't. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It was literally, you could have timed it on the runway. And it was like, Caitlyn Jenner has left the group. Oh, my God. Did <laughs> she, she did She did give her number out to various people, right, to be fair. Okay. But she obviously felt like she didn't want to be part of the... Ouch. I know. And th- you know what WhatsApp is like? It tells you, doesn't it? It's yeah. not like somebody deleted you the contract. It's like, you are no longer part of this group. <laughs> Yes. You are out. I would have just loved to have seen the conversation <laughs> that followed that. Yeah, exactly. That's good. Yeah, literally gone. Now, hang on a minute. She only just taken off. <laughs> she literally logged on to the Wi-Fi yeah, on the airplane play. just so she could remove herself. <laughs> <laughs> but she was brilliant fun in there, actually. So, but yeah, it'd be good to see her. I, fact, I have seen her again and I've interviewed her since, but she, it's, um, it's, it's, it's been a different a st- world. It's a well. different world, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, right. Let's, uh, we talked about how much you have, have been to Disneyland Paris and you love it. Yes. Have you ever done a cruise or Walt Disney World? I've never done a cruise. My, I'm very lucky. A friend of mine's sister lives in Florida and we went over to visit her and we went for the day. On uh, the cruise, by the way, they're oh, doing yeah. um, a Europe cruise this year. The Dream, which it was the big one over in the States, wow. but now they've got The Wish. The Dream is here uh, oh, that's this summer, amazing. which might work never, for you have guys. Have you been because, on a cruise? Oh, well, I did for the podcast with Tom um, last year, but we're going to take the kids on it because Is it it's amazing? magical, absolutely magical. Really? Yeah, and it's something new. You know, yes. we've experienced the park so much. It's something new and actually seeing how it makes you realise that the parks are so much more than the rides. Yes. It's the, it's the magic yeah. that's infused with everything. It is. It comes from the films, doesn't it? There is yeah. something special the about the ethos of Disney yeah. and the stories. And there is that feeling, you know, I always cry at the fireworks and I always cry at Disney. There's something about that spirit of, I don't know, bravery and kindness and a little bit of magic yeah. that you just think if we could all have that in our life every day, it'd be wonderful, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. Absolutely. I love the movies. I I think they're just... And actually, we all do, don't we? Mm. You know, there's there's always some fear in there. There's always some drama in there. There's always a sense of kind of right coming good. And over the years, I think they've evolved and they've managed to stay modern. Yeah. But with that same sort of timeless thing. So, yeah, I love the movies. I think even just looking at the love stories... And, yes. and and what that is, you know, mm. you know, looking at the love of sisters, or you know, yeah, you know, it's, it's not just grow up, meet someone, fall in love, no. end of story. No, you know? it's it's changed, hasn't it? Mm. And and there's always so much humour in there as well. Yeah. And I now made peace with the digital Disney's, but I do think there was something because they are so incredible. But there was something beautiful about the artistry of the early ones yeah. as well. But they they do that with digital now as well, so it's fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Um, do you have a favourite uh, Disney character or movie? The Lion King, I think, it always makes me cry, and I love. Although when I was little, it was Bambi. Oh no, really? Yeah. You can't get past that, can you, really? Yeah. Which is a dramatic film, The Loss of a Mother. And, yeah. you know, there's a lot of issues in yeah. there, which is what Chad is about, actually, not shying away from those issues, is it? Just that kind of, I don't know, just that sort of feeling of dreams can come true and the world stopping and problems stopping for a bit is what Disney's very good at, I think. Yeah. How many times have you been? To the park. Probably as many times as you've been to Disneyland Paris. <laughs> no, I've been quite a few times now. Have you? Yeah, and it's been great seeing um, the kids there at different stages yeah. or even going when pregnant. It's kind of knowing what you can do, what you can't do. Yeah. It's nice. And, it's and nice you're right, they more... do enjoy it at different stages, yeah. don't they? Like, you know, initially it is the magic and the characters and then it becomes the rides yeah. and then it comes back into the magic and the characters yeah. again, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, are you ready to go back? Oh, yeah, always. Good. Always. Because we are about to plan your oh. dream Disney day. Love that. Now, Love that. <laughs> there are no rules 
Oh, really? No rules. Okay. You can go anywhere, do anything. Right. So you can either go to Disneyland Paris, Walt Disney World, or on a Disney cruise. Well, you've thrown the cruise in, you see, because I've never done one. So, I mean, should I start the day on a cruise or should I end the day on a cruise? Can I go everywhere? You you can... Can I hop about? Do you know what? It would just be... You can hop around. Why not? I think for you, I would like you to wake up on the wish and see the Bahamas. Okay. See Castaway That's Key. what we start. That sounds brilliant. Yeah, and then we're going to get a helicopter and we're going to go somewhere are else. We? So that's fine. So we yeah. wake up on the witch. Yeah. What are we seeing? We're seeing out over the ocean. Oh, the ocean. It's so <gasps> beautiful. And, wow. the, and, you know, the palm trees on the island. And just have a lovely virgin pina colada for there we breakfast. Go. Let's okay. do that. You Let's can do, do that. that. Okay. okay. Right. Now, what park are you going to? I think I'm going to go first to Florida, if that's okay. okay. Walt Disney World. And it's a small world after all. Mm -hmm. And then we know we've got the song in our head for the rest of the day. Then Pirates of the Caribbean. And then I love the Peter Pan ride. It's so pretty. It is. Yeah. Is that good? Are we doing well? You're doing really really well, yeah. Okay. Have you had any snacks yet? I tell you what, I'm gonna. Can I do Big Thunder Mountain, which is as scary as I Before get? Before you snack, yeah, that's good. And so I'll, get, I'll I will have worked on a bit of courage with those other rides. So Peter Big Pan, Thunder Mountain, you ready? <laughs> yeah, come off that, and then we'll go for snacks. So I mean, I like hot chocolate. Could we have a hot chocolate? Yes, absolutely. And what other nibbles are you offering me? Have you ever had a funnel cake? No. Mm. So it's literally like donut drips that have been turned into a a cake so basically it gets dripped enough that it forms like a proper cake and then they put loads of icing sugar over it It sounds amazing i might not have sold it but it does sound really actually delicious i I bought into this right then if you're doing that i would go to sleepy hollow and go and sit there because it's a lovely view of the castle oh okay so this is the knowledge we need to the best place (laughs) to have your snacks well they also do an an amazing waffle uh, that does have fruit in it but also a lot of chocolate spread Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. So we're Sleepy Hollow, Florida, looking at the castle, yep. eating our snacks. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are we doing next? Where do you want to go? Disneyland Paris. I mean, I think the castle is beautiful in yeah. Paris. I mean, it's beautiful everywhere, but I love it in Paris. And I love the dragon, which mm. has got more scary as time's <laughs> gone on. When I first went there, it was good. Yeah. But now it, you're pitch black. The eyes are really fiery. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that would be good for me. And then lunch. I'm going to suggest lunch might be quite good at the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. You know, the restaurant they've got in Paris. And then I've got Mad Avengers fans of kids. And actually, I love Avengers too. So we'd have to go to the Avengers area. Avengers campus, yes. I know. I've not done that yet. (gasps) Exciting. Is it good? Yeah, I loved it. Talk to me about it. it. What What is it like? Well, well, I mean, if you love Avengers, there's lots of great rides there. And also, we happened to be there when they were doing some kind of thing on the roof and the characters come out and they have a fight and it's in French so you don't really know what's happening <laughs> it's, but, but it's, it's dramatic still, like, it's dramatic <laughs> and magical and ultimately the good guys win okay and Black Widow was superb actually really? that yeah she was feisty yeah. Are there rides in the Avengers camp? Yeah, there are rides, Spider-Man, we did, where, where you basically, the Spider-Man ride, you shoot web slingers. Right. And it's it's good I for me. I love that you're doing it right now. I'm doing it right now. <laughs> I'm yeah. taking you back. Yeah, do you like my action? <laughs> yeah, I love it. And you really go for it, and you come out and you go, ooh. <laughs> That must be good for the bingo wings. Spider-Man doesn't have no fear of waving at anyone. He must have no bingo wings. <laughs> That's why he wears his suit so tight. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, are you going to stop and watch a parade or a show at any point? Yeah, the parade is lovely. The last one we saw was the Christmas parade, which was just incredible. Really? Yeah, we all cried. We all cried. Oh. Yeah, it was beautiful. I don't know what it is about the coming together at the end of a Disney yeah. day. Yes. Watching the fireworks. It is, it's really moving. And I, I get moved oh watching other people have move, moving yeah. moments. Yeah, the fireworks this time, and they had drones because it was the 30th anniversary, which was how a, amazing is stunning. that display? Oh my stunning. gosh. Yeah, and by the end of it, we just told each other that if you didn't cry at that, you are made of stone because it was just so moving. And you're right, it's been a long, ex- lots of adrenaline highs and yeah. excitement and it just rounds the whole thing off. And actually, by the Disney Castle, somebody proposed, oh. which was just wonderful. What a perfect place to propose. Oh. So Darcy was like, this is the best day of my life. 
Oh, that's so what you lovely. Want. I know, we were all applauding. So, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it would make you want to propose, I think. Yeah. Um, the D Light show uh, fascinated me because when it started, we had heard rumours that it was drones. And I think at the start, there were a few. I don't remember thinking, oh. Is that is that it? And then all of a sudden it goes wow. Yeah. I it's extraordinary. It. I know. And I said, God, how do they do that? Thinking it was like a lot of people working drones. <laughs> I was thinking, I would be so stressed. What if you went wrong? And Billy was like, Mum, it's a program, it's an algorithm. I was thinking, oh my God, I'd I do mine too fast and it would crash into <laughs> a bank of Disney employees. All no, it's all computer cleverness, isn't it? But yeah, but it's, it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, so I'm guessing if Big Thunder Mountain is your limit, have you ever done Crush? No. What's oh. Crush? The coaster ride in uh, in Paris. Is in Paris? No. Crush's coaster. Oh, is it really terrifying? I mean, my five year old. No, my four, no, my four year old. Oh, did there's it. plenty of four year olds that do things that I won't. <laughs> so that brings <laughs> me crazy. no comfort. <laughs> uh, no, no, to I be honest, it, you're crush. in like pods of four. Yeah, and they spin. They go any which way. Oh, but it's um, it's incredible. Is it? Oh, I mean, I talk about this a lot. But if you ever go, if you go back to Walt Disney World, yeah, Darcy and Billy will absolutely love it. Um, Cosmic Rewind, Guardians of the Galaxy, Cosmic Rewind <gasps> is just it blew it blew my mind. Continues to blow my mind. It's like a party on a ride, and no. I just get so giddy. It fills me with joy. Oh wow! Oh, I love Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Does it make you feel sick? Is no, it too, it's not spinny. Is it more? Not in that way. No. It's a sense of utter freedom. Is the oh, way that I would wow. describe it. Wow. Yeah. I come off and I, 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 I'm just giddy. And if anyone else talks about it, I want to talk about it with them. Cause oh, what's it called? Guardians of the Galaxy? Cosmic Rewind. Cosmic Rewind. Yeah, Billy okay. Okay. Um, but uh, on the, Apparently there's one in Epcot that mm. you fly through and you have different smells of the world and it's just the most moving thing. Oh, you're talking about soaring. So that's uh, where you do travel across the world and there are different smells when you're in different really? places. Yeah, that's, that's really, really beautiful. And what's it called? Light soaring. Soaring. Okay. Yeah. Someone said that I would be brave enough to do that. Oh yeah, you'll be fine on that. Really? Yeah. It's not scary. No. no. Okay. No. Well, we've got. So we're ending on that. We're doing. We're doing Guardians of Galaxy Cosmic okay. Rewind. Yep. And then we're ending on soaring. Okay. All right then. So we've done a bit of you know a bit of travelling, but I yeah. think the way that we're, I would I would recommend the blink travelling. So you blink and you're in a different place. Okay. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. 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 Saves on, you know, carbon emissions. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Are you ready for the Lightning McQueen quick fire round? Oh, crikey. Yes, I'm braced. Yeah, this is, this it does get intense. I've got to warn you. <laughs> okay. I give you two things at lightning fast speed. Okay. And you have to give me your option. Like, you have to say which oh, one so, you want to so go So is for. it like a choice? Yes. I give oh, you gosh. two, you give okay. me one. All right. Okay. Of the got it. two got that it. I gave you. Okay. You ready? Yes. Mickey Mouse or Darth Vader? Mickey Mouse. Yeah. Uh, Mickey Waffle or Mickey Ice Cream? Waffle. Mm. Thrill Ride or Character Meet and Greet? Character Meet and Greet. <laughs> <laughs> Poncho on Water Rides or Get Soaked? Get Soaked, actually. <laughs> oh, no, no, I've got the cagoule! What am I talking about? I'm betraying my cagoule. Poncho. I'm going with Poncho. I changed my mind. <laughs> there is something great. We always have, a like, whenever it rains the first time, we all buy our ponchos. Yeah. And then we have a bag full of them underneath the pram, usually, just in case. Yeah. And that thing of trying to get everyone back in there when the it starts poncho. raining again. <laughs> it just gets soaked. Yeah. <laughs> uh, planner or play by ear? Um, well, I like to play by ear, but I prefer it if someone else has planned. Nice. <laughs> someone else doing the planning. That's fine. Uh, Marvel's Adventures Campus or Disney Illuminations, which is the nighttime uh, show at Disneyland Paris. Oh. I don't know. I, mean, I, I know. I can't, I can't believe I'm I mean, doing this. I mean, this is you. brutal. Yeah. Yep. Like pick them between Darcy and Billy. I'm going to have to go for the Illuminations. Okay. Magical. Uh, Disney merch or holiday attire? Oh, I like a bit of merch. Are you, are, do you, are you a family that wear ears? Are you wearing ears all the way around? Oh, completely. Ears, yeah. And I had Disney hat. In fact, I think I might still have my Disney clubs in my bag. Um, uh, they're very cosy. Um, <laughs> Disney, yeah, I have Disney ears on top of Disney hat if necessary, if it's chilly. Yeah. You know, you've got to. The ears have to, to be there. Yeah. Um, dance to the parade or video it all? 
I think I do both. You but you've got to dance. dance. Yeah. 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 You definitely got to dance to the parade because you want to video it to capture it, but you probably won't watch it back, but you'll remember dancing to it. It's so, so. funny, isn't it? When do you watch those videos back? I don't back? know, but you just feel like it's all so special. You want to capture it yeah. and you do it. But actually, you just want to you know, have a dance. Boogie. Yeah. yeah. A thrill seeker or bag holder? Definitely bag holder. <laughs> the best coat holder in town. <laughs> uh, finally, parks by day or parks at night? Oh, why, why do I have to choose? No, What's wrong with you? I know. Blame the person who asked the questions. I'm going to say night. Okay. I'm going to say night. You said it now. You can't take it back. Oh, is it the law? <laughs> <laughs> We're very picky about our games. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, but there is something very special, I think, about seeing Sparkly. it. Sparkly. Yes. And the floor even comes yes. alive. Yes. I know. Everything does look extra sparkly. and Yeah. Yeah, lovely. But yeah, you're right. The day's fab too. Yeah. Kate, thank you so much. It's been well, so thank you. lovely to have all things Disney holidays. Thank you. <laughs> so nice. I love the way we're just sitting and chatting with our ears <laughs> on. Now, it's that point in the show where we get all of our hints and tips from our magical Disney insider. Jamie, hello. What have you got for us this week? Hi. Uh, now, Kate talked about her recent holiday to Disneyland Paris, mm. and I know that you went for the launch of the 30th anniversary. Ah, oh, the D-Light drone show. I still think about it. I think it's absolutely epic. Beautiful. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, I want to give you some more details about what you can expect from the grand finale of the 30th anniversary, which continues until the 30th of September 2023. Mm. You saw the Dream and Shine Brighter daytime show. Mm -hmm. And we've already talked about Disney D-Light, which is the award-winning show with drone-like choreography. We also have a number of new experiences to enjoy as well. Starting with a brand new drone show called Avengers Power the Night. Ah, see, the Avengers campus wasn't open the last time I went, so tell me more. So we will be lighting up the night sky at Walt Disney Studios Park. This is a Disney Parks Worldwide exclusive, and it's the very first nighttime drone show dedicated to Marvel superheroes. <laughs> what will we see? So the show combines music, lights, pyrotechnic effects and video projections with up to 500 drones that will form a series of icons representing the powers of iconic superheroes, including Captain America, Captain Marvel, the Scarlet Witch and for the first time at Disneyland Paris, Shang-Chi. Wow. Countless Disneyland Paris cast members, including show directors, special effect designers, lighting and motion designers, they have all combined their expertise and creativity to develop this exclusive show, which will feature a soundtrack including some of the most iconic Marvel scores. Um, when is it on until? Uh, well, it started in January and it runs through to the 8th of May 2023. Amazing. But that's not all. Because over in Disneyland Park, from the 12th of April 2023, we have the return of the incredible Disney Dreams Nighttime Spectacular. Did you ever see it? Oh, I love that show. Me too. It's absolutely one of my favourites and I am so excited for it to return. Now, for anyone who's listening who doesn't know what Disney Dreams is, it's an iconic nighttime spectacular show which received one of the highest satisfaction rates since the opening of the resort. Yeah. And That's incredible. It's, it's that amazing. And so guided by Peter Pan Shadow, our guests will see some of the greatest Disney stories projected on Sleeping Beauty Castle, featuring iconic songs from Disney and Pixar movies, including Beauty and the Beast, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, Lion King, Tangled, and mm. so many more. It features state-of-the-art technology with projections, lasers, fountains, pyrotechnic effects. I mean, you name it, it's got it. And also, the mapping technology used for the show can give the effect that the castle's moving, <laughs> so the turrets and the towers can rotate and move up and down. It's so cool. Very clever. Will there be any changes? Yes, there will be, because the 2023 version of Disney Dreams will be even more epic as Sleeping Beauty Castle's rooftops will be decked out with innovative LED technology that light up in sync with the show's nostalgic soundtrack. Ah. And here's another fun fact for you. Energy efficient laser video projectors will be used that will reduce energy by up to 50% while delivering a breathtaking show. That's amazing. Yeah. It's brilliant cool. that that is being thought about as well. Yeah, I mean, I think the innovation and the imagineering doesn't just stick to what you can see. Yeah. So we have to be, you know, green and trying to conserve and reduce as much as possible. So great. Great news. And that brings us to the end of another wonderful episode of Journey to the Magic Series 3. A huge thanks to Kate Garraway. And please do join me next week where I'll be chatting to actress and huge Disney fan, Ruth Maidley. <laughs> <laughs> 